Hi, I'm Kirsten Sanford, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Michio Kaku. Thank you for joining me today. Glad to be here, Kirsten. It's wonderful to have um, a physicist and a science educator such as yourself here to be able to speak with me. Mm -hmm. um, you are on a book tour right now. You've written a book, The Physics of the Impossible, which is really exciting and very interesting. What was it that kind of drew you? I mean, you write physics texts and you write popular books about physics? Well, when I was a child, I had two childhood heroes. The first was Albert Einstein. When he died, everyone was talking about the death of the greatest scientist of the age, but everyone said that he didn't finish his masterpiece, the unified field theory, the theory of right. everything. I was a child. I was fascinated by this story, and I said to myself, I want to be part of that quest to finish what the greatest scientists of our age could not finish, mm -hmm. the theory of everything. But I had a second hero, too. I used to watch Flash Gordon on TV. <laughs> I was like glued to the TV set. But you know, after a okay. while, you learn the facts of life. I didn't have blonde hair. I didn't have muscles. Right. And I said to myself, my, I said to myself now wait a minute, it's the scientist that makes the series work. It's Dr. Zarkov. He invents the starship. <laughs> he invents the ray guns. He invents the city in the sky, right? Right. Without Dr. Zarkov, there's no Flash Gordon. Without science, there's no science fiction. Right. So I said to myself, when I become a physicist, and I know exactly the boundary between the edge of physics and science fiction, then I'm mm. going to write a book for somebody like me as a kid, wondering about invisibility and teleportation, right. starships, and time travel. Well, now I'm a physicist, so I can write a book like this. And they told me, well, it's impossible that a book like that with physics in the title could hit the New York Times bestseller list. And now? And it happened. The impossible happened. happened. It's number 12 <laughs> on the New York Times bestseller list. So there are a lot of people out there just like me watching Star Wars and Star Trek and Terminator and then wondering, is it possible? Well, that, that's, this book is for them. Absolutely. And the question also, you know, you say sci there's no science fiction without science, but that goes in the, the reverse also. Science fiction also drives science questions. That's right. So take a look at Edwin Hubble. He's the greatest astronomer of the 20th mm -hmm. century, he discovered the expanding universe. Mm -hmm. But he originally, he was a lawyer. He was going to be a country lawyer, right. and that's it. But as a child, he read Jules Verne. Okay. And he had a romance of the stars. And he quit being a lawyer, went to graduate school at the University of Chicago, wow. and he was in a rush, a real rush, because he was you know, much older. older. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to make some big breakthroughs. And he made the biggest breakthrough of the 20th century, the expanding universe, which gives yeah. us the Big Bang. Right. And it's led to so many other ideas about how the universe works, the concept of dark matter, dark energy. Um, people looking at you know how far back time goes and what started everything out. Gee, I this mean, is all the things go, I do for a living. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's my day job. <laughs> that sounds rough. <laughs> <laughs>